Welcome to Okanagan Nature Camp. My name is Kim Kogler and I work for the Okanagan Conservation District. Today at Okanagan Nature Camp, we're going to be doing a guided meditation about the life cycle of a salmon. Now for this activity, you're going to need very little. In fact, you'll just need yourself. Find a cozy spot, indoors or outdoors. Bundle up if you're going outdoors. It might actually even help you imagine the cold. And if you're indoors, just find a cozy place where you can either lay down or sit down. In this activity, I hope that you have a greater understanding by the end of what it means to be a salmon and that you will also learn about a couple new words like alvin or fry or red. Now I'm going to turn you around and I'll start talking and while I'm doing that I want you guys to get cozy and ready to do your meditation. Okay, gently close your eyes and take a deep breath in and out. Do this several times and allow your body to get more relaxed with each breath. Notice how peaceful your body feels as you breathe deeply. As you relax, I am going to guide you through an adventure, the life of a salmon. Now imagine, or really do this, yourself curled in a small ball. You are squeezed inside an egg case the size of a green pea. You cannot see anything. You only feel. Cold water rushes around you, bringing fresh, clean water and oxygen. Small rocks secure you on all sides, keeping you in place despite the strong current pushing against you. You only sway a little left and right. You start to feel more crammed in your shell. Moving and turning is no longer easy. You push against your shell with your head and tail and pop! Your head breaks through the shell and you are free, a free and very small alvin or baby salmon. As an alvin, you can see, although everything is rather blurry. You look down and see that your belly is very round. It feels like someone strapped a bowling ball around your middle, and it is difficult to move. That bowling ball is your food, and it will help you grow into a strong fry. Day by day, your belly shrinks and shrinks until one day, it completely disappears. You're officially a fry. As a fry, you can move a lot easier. You wiggle your tail back and forth and swim cautiously around the rocks. As you become more confident in your swimming, you push your tail hard and leave your pile of rocks behind. The current takes you downriver. You see a log to your right. Hmm, perfect cover for you to hide from animals that will eat you and to watch for insects that you will want to eat. You steer yourself right and slip under the log. The log slows the water so it is barely moving, giving you a chance to rest. Once you catch your breath, you realize a rumbling and grumbling in your belly. You are hungry. You look out from under the log and you see a small insect nibbling on algae. You look around and see nothing. So in a quick second, you dart out Grab the insect and swim back under your log. Woo! Made it! You spend a year in your river, hiding, eating, and surviving. The spring after you hatched, you look down at your body and are surprised. It used to be a dark green color with several big black spots along the side. You blended in with the brown green color of the water and rocks beside you. Now, however, the spots are fading and you are turning silver. You are turning into a smolt, a teenage salmon. It is time to go downstream before you stand out too much with this shiny new look. As you move down river, you take in all the sights and smells of your home. You will remember this place. During your trek downstream, barriers and predators will challenge your strength and stealth. Your first challenge is a large concrete wall that blocks the path of both you and the river. You swim along the wall until you see an opening and many other smolts. You follow them through the opening and travel down a dark passage, down, down, until suddenly you pop out on the other side of the dam. You notice that with so many fish in one place, birds are diving in water, in the water trying to catch their lunch. Uh -oh. In a flash, you make your way safely into deeper water 
and travel from hiding place to hiding place, continuing downstream. Each river you travel down joins another river, and the river becomes larger and larger. One day you start to feel a change in the river and in your body. The water tastes saltier, but you don't mind it. You hear a pounding boom through the water every few seconds from the ocean's waves. Avoiding the ruckus, you travel beyond where the waves are crashing, but still close to shore. Here you see thousands of small fish, perfect for lunch. And you notice jellyfish floating through the water and crabs that scurry from rock to rock. Seagrass and seaweed sway in the waves' currents, and you enjoy swimming through them, feeling the tickle along your sides. You are now completely silver, and you notice that the silver blends in with the clear ocean water. As you grow bigger eating meals of small fish, you decide to travel deeper to deeper water away from the beach. You swing your tail strongly back and forth and make your way to greater depths. The fish around you are bigger, but so are you. You catch herring and squid, relishing in the diversity of flavors and textures. You swim next to jellyfish and away from larger orcas that love salmon for breakfast. Occasionally, you swim through water that smells bad and feels gunky as it goes through your gills. You try to avoid that water. You also notice plastic bags and old balloons that look a lot like jellyfish, but are not. Years go by and you grow to be the size and weight of a one-year-old human. You feel ready to return to where you grew up and decide to follow the same path that led you to the ocean, but in reverse. You swim towards the beach with the little tickly seagrass and seaweed. When the water is high enough, you enter the river that smells a little like home. Other adult salmon surround you. They are returning to their home streams too. Your body changes again as the salt water turns to fresh water. You are no longer hungry. Instead, you feel an intense urge to return home quickly and lay your eggs. It is time. You swim past rocks and fallen trees, through rapids, and jump over waterfalls in your quest to return home. You see many different streams that other salmon travel towards, but none of them remind you of your home. Then you run into the dam. You travel along the side until you feel a fast current like a waterfall. You jump up and slowly swim your way up a fish staircase. Up, up over the dam. Further on, you come to a side stream that smells even more like your home. Look, there is the fallen tree that you used to hide under when you were a small fry. It sure is nice to be home. You are tired from your long journey and can see many cuts and scars on your body. Those cuts tell a story of near deaths from predators and very hard work swimming upstream. They remind you of your strength and your luck. Of the nearly 5,000 eggs in your red, the nest of eggs, only three of you returned home. You feel lucky that you made it home and that three of your family made it home. In some neighbor reds, only one salmon returned. You search along the shallow waters to find a spot that has small rocks to bury your eggs as you are buried. You beat the water with your tail to clear the sand and make a bowl in the small rocks that will hold your eggs. Your partner salmon joins you at the nest. You lay the thousands of eggs that you carried all the way from the ocean and your partner salmon releases a white cloud of sperm that will fertilize the eggs. Finally, Feeling exhausted, you find some quiet water near the nest to rest your head. You have not eaten since you left the ocean, and it finally caught up with you. You take one last deep breath, and as you exhale, you think of your baby salmon. Your body will nourish the stream, providing food for the insects that your babies will greatly need. You think of the adventures those small alvins will have as they grow to fry, to smolts, and then travel to the ocean and become strong adults. What a cycle to be a part of. Now take another deep breath and return to the present. You traveled far as a salmon. When you are ready, open your eyes. Wow, I love that last line. What a cycle to be a part of. I am always amazed by salmon, how they can go from being so small and grow so big 
and travel from fresh water to salt water and back. Truly amazing lives. Now, what I'd like you to do now is go and grab a pencil and paper, or if you have someone nearby that you can talk to about this, that would be great too. And I just have a few questions and you can just pick and choose the questions that feel right to you and that you want to discuss. So tell someone or write about your journey. How did it feel? What did you notice as a little salmon? And what surprised you? Were there challenges you experienced? How do you think we could make salmon's journeys easier on them? And do you have any other questions about the salmon life cycle? On this last one, I'd love it if you wrote your questions. You can email me and I'll respond back about what questions you may have. Or you could even look them up online. Down below in the description, I have a couple more resources that might help you with some of those questions. So go ahead and check those out. Finally, maybe you could just take some time to explain the salmon life cycle to a family or friend. Talk it through. Sometimes the best way to learn about something is to teach someone else. Maybe you could have them do this again with you. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I had such a wonderful time and I hope you did too. I hope you learned something about the salmon life cycle or that you even learned some new vocabulary. Now, there are more videos for Okanagan Nature Camp and if you enjoyed this one, I would highly recommend that you go check those out too. I'll see you around. Bye.